We start today's virtual exploration at Dunstable in Bedfordshire, and then to nearby Hitchin, and then further north to Loughton and Bedford. Our last two sites are in Leicestershire, at Husbands Bosworth and Melton Mowbray. In 1929, Mr. Sheriff of Lucy Farm Dunstable set up a landing ground. This was at the request of Sir Alan Cobham, who was looking for suitable sites to hold his National Aviation Day displays. The 500 horsepower Armstrong Sidley airliner, referenced in this newspaper cutting, was actually a de Havilland giant moth. It was powered by an Armstrong Sidley Jaguar radial engine. The site was used several times by National Aviation Day displays and was also available for visiting pilots. It closed at the outbreak of the Second World War and has now been swallowed up by suburban Dunstable. Another flying site opened near Dunstable at a similar time to Lucy Farm. The London Gliding Club were looking for a permanent home and opened a flying site on the windward side of Dunstable Downs. Like many early gliding clubs, instruction was given in primary gliders and when suitably proficient, pilots could be bungee launched off the top of the downs into the wind. A new clubhouse and hangar was built in the Art Deco style of the time. At the outbreak of the Second World War, all gliding stopped. However, it wasn't long before the chief flying instructor, Tim Harvey, and most of the staff instructors, many of whom were already servicemen, were drafted to form the 1st Glider Pilot Regiment. They were based at RAF Tame, formerly the Aylesbury and Tame Airport. One of the instructors, Lawrence Wright, recorded their various antics in a book named The Wooden Sword. Happily it's available as a free PDF download. Link in the description. The gliding site at Dunstable was used as a prisoner of war camp, but it closed in 1945 and the gliding club returned. In 1947, one of the original London Gliding Club instructors, now Lieutenant Commander John Sprawl of Fleet Air Arm, was photographed with his Aronka 100 at Dunstable. Some years later, John Sprawl rescued another vintage Aronka. It's now painted yellow and features regularly on this channel. Happily, after nearly 100 years, the Gliding Club is still very much alive. A landing ground was available at Bancroft Farm, just north of Hitchin, throughout the 1930s. It was owned by the Wallace brothers, who also ran the Bancroft Dairy in Hitchin, but that is all my research has turned up. Anyway, the field was closed by the outbreak of the Second World War and is now covered in housing. Lieutenant Commander Harrison ran the Fountain Hotel throughout the 1930s. He also rented a field about one mile south of the hotel. Visiting pilots were instructed to circle the hotel three times, at which point a car would be dispatched to the flying field to pick them up. These photographs of the flying field were found on the Britain from Above website. The name Loughton and the Fountain Hotel are both picked out in white painted cement. Sir Alan Cobham's National Aviation Day displays used the field in 1932 and 1933. And in 1937, our old friend Captain Percival Phillips spent two days towing gliders with an Avro 504N for the London Gliding Club. The site of the landing field is now lost in the subtopian misery of modern day Milton Keynes.
the Fountain Hotel on the main A5 road survives. These days it's been bypassed, it's now a Harvester restaurant, but it is the same building. Mr. Walwyn and later Messrs. Smith and Weston ran a small landing ground at Marsh Lays, just south of Bedford at Kempston. My research has not turned up any information about this landing ground. The site is now lost under the Bedford bypass and industrial development. The landing ground at Marsh Lees was only a couple of miles west of the Royal Airship Works at Cardington. Built as a private venture by Short Brothers, but nationalised as the Royal Airship Works in 1919, Cardington is best known for its two airship sheds, which stand to this day, and for its association with the ill-fated airship R101. A small airfield was opened by Mr Linnell at Coat Hill in the early 1930s. Fuel and oil were available, as was Hangerage, but the primary use of the airfield appears to have been the Rugby District Gliding Club, who were listed as using it throughout the 1930s. Coat Hill Aerodrome is still farmland. In 1943, RAF Husbands Bosworth was built on a site about a mile east of the old Coat Hill Aerodrome. Primarily an operational training unit, the air station was equipped with Wellington bombers, Miles Masters and a sole Avro Anson. It closed in 1946. In 1953, the Coventry Gliding Club moved from Baggington Aerodrome to Husbands Bosworth. They've been there ever since. Mr. Brewitt ran a landing ground just east of Melton Mowbray throughout the 1930s. There were no facilities whatsoever, and the field appears to have been more used by horses than flying machines. It's still there today as farmland. Just to the southwest of this flying field is the church at Burton Lazars, where the fabulous Playboy racing driver Louis Borowski is buried. Thank you for watching.